Senate Water in our county is the board chair of the Santa Clara Valley Water District, Tony, oh, Tony Estramera, who represents District 6. Tony began his tenure on the district board in 1996. In addition to this year, he served as chair of the board in 2001 and 2007. He has extensive government experience in both appointed and elected positions, serving on the Santa Clara County Grand Jury, Santa Clara County Housing Task Force, Valley Medical Center Advisory Board, Santa Clara County Personnel Board, San Jose Municipal Stadium Task Force, the Mayor's Committee on Minority Affairs, and the San Jose Evergreen Community College District Board of Trustees. Tony is Directing Attorney for the Legal Aid Society of Santa Clara County and earned his bachelor's degree from Santa Clara University and a law degree from UC's Bolt Hall School of Law. He is an active member of the State Bar of California and the Santa Clara County Bar Association. Please welcome Tony Estramero.
How many of you guys have a 40 year agreement with anybody besides your spouses? <laughs> I couldn't find one. And then I bragged about how the private sector has stepped up, how the chamber, the leadership group have been so supportive uh, with all of our, our uh, initiatives, and uh, how uh, now, uh, especially on our planet, Apple will cost everybody new, no matter what country they came from. I said, you know, and Apple has made a substantial investment in a public facility with the pipeline that Catherine described earlier, and how uh, a lot of the rest of the public sector, golf courses and so on, have been stepping up with us to, to, to produce more uh, recycled water. And I explained to them, because some of them said, oh, what is that? I said, look, it's a public resource. Recycled water is something that the public will own. Certainly, the public produces it. We own it. <laughs> we will control it. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, it's a great resource. Uh, so I write about that. But, um, so I want to thank all of you for uh, sharing with us this morning and uh, let me write some more here. Uh, but I also wanted to introduce uh, an innovator at the state level, just, just like with us, uh, Mr. Mark Cohen. Uh, you know, he was just recently reappointed director for the California Department of Water Resources by our governor. Uh, and uh, Mr. Cohen uh, has extensive experience uh, with California Water Resources Management and has served as director of the DWR since 2010. He's worked at DWR since uh, 1981. As, as the director there, Mr. Cohen uh, heads of the department that protects, conserves, and manages the state's water supply, including uh, operation of California State Water Project, and has a department that has made substantial investments in uh, recycling, in our recycling programs. Uh, it is the largest state-run, multi-purpose uh, water and power system in the United States. It provides a supplemental water source for more than 25 million Californians and about 750,000 um, <clears throat> acres of irrigated farmland and directly sustains over 400 billion of the state's economy. The, the DWR forecasts future water needs, evaluates uh, and inventories existing water supplies. It explores conservation and storage options and supervises flood management, including emergency response to floods. In recent years, with the passage of Proposition 1, i.e. 84, DWR has the additional responsibility of administering over $5 billion in bond funding for the purposes of flood protection and ecosystem restoration. Now, faced with the uh, challenges of population growth and changing climate, DWR is taking on and an active role in the promotion of sustainable resource management through its implementation of grants, some of which we have received, and other programs that DWR also plays a major role in the management of the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta and is committed to achieving the goal of a healthy, resilient Delta. And by the way, he received his BS in civil engineering right here at Stanford uh, in 1980. Let's go. Very strong, I think, in the Brown administration uh, 
this year. Uh, uh, we had a big collaborative effort that got started out this time last year and, and uh, working through to about the, the first of the year, uh, putting together what we call uh, the California Water Action Plan. Uh, it's really a pretty fundamental thing, but uh, historic in terms of the collaboration across agency boundaries within the Ground Administration. Put these, this comprehensive plan together that really describes uh, a specific approach to improving water supply reliability throughout California. It's a very ambitious plan. It's a pretty easy read, actually. It's about 30 pages, and it's understandable. So if you really want to learn more about California water and the path forward, I agree really would uh, suggest that you Google that uh, document and, and take a look at it. It's uh, very informative. It sets out a very ambitious, comprehensive plan. Um, categories of actions like making conservation a California way of life. Uh, if that is not obvious after this year, uh, it never will be. Increasing regional self-reliance and integrated water management across all levels of government. Uh, one of the big innovations of the past decade or two has been integrated regional water management and um, we've been fortunate enough to have grant funding to promote that type of activity at the state level but it brings local agencies together that have different responsibilities allows them to use their innovation to uh, come up with their priorities and plans and the need basic standards for good planning and uh, we can provide grant funding to help make projects come to fruition on the ground uh, other goals achieving co-equal goals for the delta heard from Chris about the Delta Conservation Plan. Uh, I wholeheartedly agree uh, the Delta is the heart of California water. Uh, it isn't well. Uh, we're running out of time and alternatives for uh, correcting that pathway and implementing the Bay Delta Conservation Plan is one of the most fundamental things we need to do to uh, move towards a path towards reliable California water supplies. Um, protecting and restoring important ecosystems. Uh, you can't have reliable water supplies without healthy, robust uh, ecosystems for where we draw the water. They just go hand in hand together. And that's another big innovation in the past few years, that, that recognition that uh, healthy ecosystems and reliable water supplies really are one and the same thing. Expanding water storage capacity and improving groundwater management um, kind of speaks for itself. And a really important category of actions, increasing operational and regulatory efficiency. I, of course, deal with this a lot, but I'm sure you all do in, in your business practices, but uh, too often we uh, run up against regulations that uh, uh, compete with one another, uh, finding a pathway through uh, the regulatory um, uh, system is often challenging or impossible, and we've got to find ways to align those regulations in a way that uh, allows good projects to go forward and gets the most for public investment. Uh, a really important element of this plan is that it's comprehensive in nature. There is no silver bullet. Uh, if we can have folks that advocate for water reuse, we can have that folks that advocate for new storage, conservation, that's great. But we've got to do it all to get to uh, the goal that we're trying to achieve. So no silver bullet. And um, making adequate progress towards all of the goals in this plan is extremely important. And what we found is that uh, it provides great context as well. We're trying to push a specific action that um, uh, may be controversial or difficult to get across the finish line. Reminding folks that it's part of the bigger picture is extremely important in making our case. Uh, so it's been of great service to us to have this, uh, this California Water Action Plan to uh, draw back to and provide sort of the framework for all of our actions as we move through this, this difficult year. So back to my baseball analogy, um, um, it didn't take long for the um, euphoria of our, our getting out of the gate quickly to evaporate. Um, December and January, of course, were some of the driest months in California history. Uh, the reality of the drought uh, came down to us in, in very short order. And I, on my personal learning curve, uh, uh, it just reminds me how vulnerable we are in California. We, we depend upon three, four, five of these big storm systems to come through in those months to really generate our water supplies on an annual basis in California. When they don't show up, it's stunning. Uh, it's, it's hard to believe that uh, you know, it didn't rain in January. But there we were, and um, we moved quickly, of course. Uh, the governor declared a drought emergency uh, in January. Um, the uh, administration came together and put a 
together a comprehensive response, including uh, some of the funding that uh, was referred to earlier. We uh, got a couple hundred million dollars of, of uh, previous bond money uh, into our budget and uh, work absolute miracles to get their next provided process to uh, award that money uh, in the last few months. So we've made the uh, awards now. We're working through actually getting the money in the hands of the folks that can build projects with it. So uh, that's one piece of success. Um, for my agency, the, the hardest part of dealing with drought, of course, was operations of the State Water Project, which uh, provides a, a vital part of um, uh, the Silicon Valley's water supply as well as uh, much of California. Um, in times of drought, it's all about balancing the pain. And uh, water users suffered both on the ag and urban fronts. A lot of life suffered. Uh, so we worked together with uh, the various Fish and Wildlife Regulatory Agency, the State Water Resources Control Board, to uh, figure out how to best balance operations to essentially share the pain. Um, we think we got through that fairly successfully, uh, but it was uh, no picnic for sure. And, uh, you know, I, I think one of the other things that comes through, and, and uh, uh, the director mentioned this earlier, uh, the fact that California did as well as it did through this historic drought, I think, is a testament to uh, the investments that we've made in the past several decades. Um, and, you know, it's not homogeneous across the state. Uh, bigger metropolitan areas did much better than some smaller isolated communities. Uh, but in general, those investments that we made had paid off. Uh, the other uh, mitigating factor for the drought this year was access to good groundwater supplies. Um, without those groundwater supplies, our agricultural sector, particularly in the Central Valley, would have suffered much, much more. And as we contemplate that this might not be the end of drought, and it could be uh, extended uh, for another dry year, perhaps several more dry years, I think the light bulb we're living off with uh, many Californians and certainly in the California legislature. And our, our comeback in our season this year, of course, I think was the, um, uh, the performance of the California legislature working with Governor Brown to get some very important legislation passed and signed. And of course, that includes uh, Proposition 1, uh, the new water bond, $7.5 billion that will uh, be on the ballot in November. Um, extremely important from my point of view uh, for sustaining investment in California water supply. Um, it was important politically to replace the uh, existing water bond that was uh, highly criticized and uh, would much feared uh, would not pass um, uh, through a vote. So getting to agreement on the elements of the water bond of reduced size uh, it was extremely important. Uh, just the, the numbers quickly, regional water, water reliability, this integrated regional water management program I spoke of before, $810 million to continue those sorts of, of uh, grants moving forward. $2.7 billion for new water storage capacity, $725 million for water recycling, $900 million for groundwater sustainability, $520 million for safe drinking water, and another $1.9 billion for watersheds and flood management. Um, what's important about these investments in these categories is it matches the, um, uh, the elements of the California Water Action Plan. And of course, it's good public policy to have a plan for your investments. But uh, it, it's also very clear that voters uh, favor financing plans uh, rather than specific actions. So um, uh, we think we're in good shape and uh, very happy to see this bond go before the voters. Um, one aspect of it that doesn't get a lot of attention is it's not just the $7.5 billion, but it's the uh, local cost sharing and federal cost sharing that the bond will leverage. So um, $7.5 billion is a lot of money, but we expect the, uh, the actual investment in California water will be several times that amount at the end of the day. The other important piece of legislative action, of course, was the, uh, the groundwater management legislation that um, uh, I think shocked a lot of us that in the water business for a long time that the legislature could take this on and, and get it done this year. Uh, it's something that we have uh, known we've needed in California for many, many decades. And we've um, relied upon uh, overdrafting our checkbook, if you will, in order to um, uh, survive 
but um, you can't do that forever. And um, this year, the uh, stars aligned, and I think we got a very positive, sustainable groundwater management uh, legislation, set of legislation passed. Um, in short, uh, this set of legislation requires local agencies to organize and develop and implement sustainable groundwater management plans. Uh, we've got a lot of responsibilities as the Department of Water Resources to uh, better describe what that is, what it looks like at the end of the day, but it's going to be up to the local agencies to uh, make it happen to the extent that uh, local agencies don't make it happen, then the State Water Resources Control Board will have a role as a, a backstop to step in, at least temporarily, to uh, help performance. But uh, uh, we, at, at, within the at Brown administration, know that successful outcome will be success at the local level, and we're very much uh, uh, looking forward to uh, working with local agencies to make sure we can make this happen. Um, of course, you're ahead of the curve here in uh, Santa Clara Valley Water District. Um, uh, it's named as a governing body to um, implement sustainable groundwater management uh, in this area. Uh, part of the big hassle for the next year or so will be in other parts of the state, local agencies trying to come together and figure out how they will govern themselves to develop and implement these plans. And I expect a few food fights as uh, that uh, carries out. Um, this is really much more than a, a groundwater bill. Um, I think it is a game changer for California water management. It really puts us into the forefront of, of uh, sustainable water management as opposed to finally shutting the door on an era of resources extraction. Uh, you can't manage groundwater in isolation. It's got to be managed as part of a broader system. So if you're going to manage groundwater sustainably, uh, you can only do it if you manage your entire water supply system sustainably. So, uh, as I say, I think this is a, a real game changer. Much work to do to sort out the details and make it work, but um, we're at a real pivot point and an important pivot point for California in uh, moving towards sustainability. So, I, I think I will wrap up there. Uh, again, this is just an extremely challenging time for water managers, as uh, evidenced this year. Hardships do create opportunities, and I think we can all pat ourselves on the back for taking uh, uh, a lot of um, advantage of those opportunities this year. The stage really is set for a, a new era of California water management. It's going to happen through leadership, and the leadership of folks that are uh, in this room will be an important part of that. So thank you in advance for uh, all the work you've done and all the work you're going to do. Thank you.
and our advanced purification center and expanding that whole system to provide that reliable supply. We're, com and we're committed to ensuring that the limited resources are well managed and we make wise investments of the public dollars into those systems. Speaking of innovation as we have through this conference, I also wanted to um, make sure as we tap into the innovation in Silicon Valley that the district in our safe clean water measure that passed in 2000 had a component of it to provide funding to leverage the innovation of Silicon Valley. We're going to be offering our first conservation research grant program that will provide funding for research projects, new and innovative, innovative ways of water resource conservation and technologies in order to identify water saving devices and strategies to assist us in meeting the long term water saving goals. The applications are due November 30th of this year, 14. Look on the website if you find information on how to make that. So, as you can see, and as we mentioned earlier, Crisis provides great opportunities for us, and collaboration and innovation will get us there. I see a very positive future for this valley. The water supply will support this economy. We will meet the needs of this community, but we'll need your help. We need your engagement in the conversations. We need your engagement and understanding of the issues, and we need to hear back from you. So it doesn't end today. But, but to wrap up here, what I wanted to make sure is, is first off, thank you for attending this meeting. Um, it is very important to us. It's very important to the economy of Silicon Valley. And I want to thank you for that. I also have a couple of tasks that Teresa has asked me. On your table is a little flyer. It offers you an opportunity to call and get a tour of the water purification facility. That water purification center is the future of water supply in Silicon Valley. So call, get a tour. I also need to remind you that when you all leave this room today, there are some buckets for you to put your showers. There are also sound signs. Brown is a new green. We're gonna look, we have a list of who you are. <laughs> we're, we'll, we will find you, we will check. So grab the signs, pass that message along to everybody. And just in closing, I just want to express my appreciation to everybody that helped put this together. There's a lot of people here that you don't see that are behind the scenes. People have wrote comments, my remarks, wrote these PowerPoint presentations, are back there videotaping, they're taking pictures, True under Teresa's leadership, putting this whole thing together. There's a lot of work that goes into this. I just really wanted to acknowledge them and appreciate them and thank them as we close. Thank you.